Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions about, of all things, measles. I was at a party the other night and somebody said, like, Dr. Klobman, I've been watching you, but you haven't talked that much about measles. And we see all this stuff in the newspaper about measles. So this week, we're talking about measles. You didn't know there was going to be a test, Janet, but there's a test. You remember we talked about our number in the beginning of the pandemic to try and understand how infectious viruses can be. Well, this is a nice example where if, if you're an in infected person and you meet a bunch of people who are uninfected, how the number of people you infect is actually the R number. So uh, if a person walks into a group of five and in infects three, the R number, R0, is three. If it's two out of five, it's two. If it's five out of five, it's, it's five. And you can see that you can look at the attack rate as a percentage based on, on that R number. So why is that important? That's important in, in, as we think about viruses because that impacts how much uh, immunity you need in a community to prevent spread or herd, uh, herd immunity. So if you take all the different infectious diseases and look at their R number, there's some ones like in the twos, like uh, uh, normal seasonal flu, two and two and a half, uh, typhoid fever, even Ebola, and, SAR, and, and COVID-19 started off at about two and two and a half. And with each mutation, it got more and more and more infectious to the point where it actually was almost 10 or 11. So that is really important as you think about infectious diseases. But I want to uh, point out measles is way more infectious. So where COVID-19 had a, an R number of about 11, 10, 11, or 12, measles is 18. In other words, if you walk into a room of 118 people are gonna be infected. And of course, there's only one virus that's more infectious than that, that's rotavirus. And that's why I never, I have a cruise ship here, a Disney cruise. That's why you will never, ever see me on a cruise ship because all it takes is one case of norovirus and everybody's sick. I'd hate to like, be on this, the, the seas for five days with everyone throwing up. Anyway, so why is that important? Well, herd immunity can be calculated. Again, this is a little bit of math, but one minus one over the R number. So if the R number is two, like seasonal flu, uh, one over one half is half or 50%. And what that means is that to reach herd immunity, you'd have to have 50% of the population immune, completely immune, and then with an R number of two, that virus will not really spread throughout the community. It'll, it'll get from one group person to another, but it won't be like a mass tra uh, uh, transmission to everyone. When you get an R number of 18 though, you have to have 94 to 95% of the population resistant before you can prevent spread. That's why whenever there's a, a reduction in the amount of um, vaccinations, the first thing that you get in an outbreak is measles because it's the most infectious and if anyone's exposed and has not been vaccinated, they will get it. So a lot of discussion around measles. Measles is actually a really fascinating disease that because so many people have been vaccinated, they don't see a lot of it, but it's not, it's not a fun disease. So it was first described by a Pers Persian physician actually in the ninth century and then Francis Home, a Scottish physician, demonstrated in 1757 that measles can be caused by an actual infectious agent. And in 1912, in the United States, measles became a disease that was nationally notifiable. In other words, if you were a, a laboratory or a, a caregiver, a doctor or any caregiver, you had to report every case. And so back then, in the first decades of reporting measles, there were an average of 6,000 measles deaths per year. So it's a really bad disease. And prior to the introduction of the measles vaccine in 1963, there were over 100 million cases uh, worldwide with 6 million deaths. And in the US, nearly every child got measles by the time they were 15 years of age. I got measles when I was a kid. In 1963, right before the vaccine, there were 4 million cases and 450 deaths 
48,000 hospitalizations and 1,000 cases of encephalitis, which means you get swelling of the brain. And, the, and you could have cognitive decline in kids or deafness in kids. And I knew a lot of my ki friends, not a lot, I knew several kids uh, as I was growing up who'd had measles and were deaf as a result of it. Uh, it is estimated now that the measles vaccine has averted 57 million deaths between 2000 and 2022, so over the uh, 22 years. And the WHO reported that in, 19, uh, that in 2022, there were estimated 136,000 measles deaths globally among those who were unvaccinated or undervaccinated under the age of five. And by 2022, 83% of the world's children had received one dose of measles vaccine, but that's actually less. It had been, it had been higher than that, uh, and it was the lowest number uh, since 2008. So this is a problem with the recent years where people are, like, not not getting vaccinated. So the history of the vaccine is actually kind of interesting. In 1954, John Anders and Tom Peebles collected blood samples from several ill students during an outbreak in Boston, and they succeeded in isolating a viral strain from a 13-year-old, David Edmonston's blood. And in 1963, Edners and colleagues transformed this Edmonston B strain of measles, which is an attenuated virus. So it's, you grow it to make it less and less infectious and licensed it as a vaccine into the United States. And in 1968, there was continued to be improvements in the vaccine. It's a live attenuate, so the improvements are to make it less and less infectious uh, so it, it can be given uh, to people as a live vaccine. Uh, and it's usually now combined with mumps and rubella, uh, it's called the MMR. So in 1978, uh, CDC set a goal to eliminate measles entirely from the United States in 1982. And this, they didn't accomplish this, but uh, the use of the vaccine really dramatically reduced the, the amount of disease. And by 1981, the numbers were about 80% less than before. But there was an outbreak in 1989. And what that led to is a, another uh, suggestion by the CDC that you get two vaccines. Uh, and so once they got two vaccines, uh, measles cases were actually eliminated. You can see this is what it was like pre-vaccine, there were a couple of outbreaks with one dose. Once the second dose was recommended, it disappeared. And in 2000, the CDC declared that measles was gone from the United States. Well, why is that important? Think about this infection. Uh, I, remember, <laughs> I remember it as a kid because it's not pretty. Seven to 14 days after exposure, you begin to get symptoms. And the symptoms are, are, are particularly dangerous for young kids under the age of five. Uh, typically begins with an extremely high fever, 103, 104 degrees, cough, runny nose. Two to three days after the symptoms develop, their white spots uh, show up in the mouth. It's very typical. They're called coplic spots. And three to five days after that, uh, the, the, the measles rash appears. It starts usually on the face and in the hairline, spreads down to the rest of the body. And in case you've never seen a case of measles, this is what it looks like in the beginning with the runny nose and eyes, high fever, and this is what the rash looks like. And it is really extensive. Now, things are better now because we have a vaccine, but there still tends to be outbreaks because there are a lot of people who don't get vaccinated or won't have their kids vaccinated. So one in five unvaccinated people who get, who get in infected are hospitalized. It's still a very serious illness. And one in 20 children get pneumonia, and the pneumonia is what usually kills uh, young children. They get a measles pneumonia. One in 1,000 get encephalitis, and that can leave children either deaf or intellectually disabled. And about one to three of every 1,000 die from respiratory infections. And if you're a pregnant woman who's not uh, had a vaccination and it gets measles during her pregnancy, uh, it's associated with low birth weight uh, uh, infants. So what's going on now? Uh, there have been case reports in a number of different states. Uh, eight outbreaks have been uh, demonstrated in this year with uh, three or more cases. There have been a total of 131 cases, and half of those patients have had to be hospitalized. If you look at where they are, the dark blue is a, you know, the highest number of cases. And you can see that they're often in urban centers where there are foreign travelers. The way uh, it usually works is measles isn't endemic in the United States, but because it's still pr prevalent worldwide, 
someone who's infected comes in and exposes a group of people who have not been vaccinated for, because their family chose not to have a vaccination. That then starts an infection and anybody who's uninfected in that region will get infected. So if you look at coverage for kindergartners, vaccine coverage, light orange is not good. <laughs> that's below 90 to 94 percent and that's what I was saying. If you're below 95 percent coverage, you're not at herd immunity and so they're, you're it's susceptible to outbreaks. So you know these are the places if you look at where there's low vaccination, uh, you can definitely have outbreaks seen. And we've seen a little uptick over the last several years of cases. So who should be vaccinated? Uh, just so you, you know, what are the current recommendations? The CDC recommends all children get two doses of the MMR vaccine, which includes uh, measles, starting with the first dose at 12 to 15 months of age and the second dose at four to six years of age. That will provide, and this is a live attenuated virus that provides immunity. Students who are going to college, post high school uh, institutions, who do not have presumptive immunity, uh, in other words, they haven't been documented to have it or haven't been, had antibodies measured, need two doses of the vaccine 28 days apart. And again, adults who do not have clear immunity also need to get at least one dose. Certain, certain adults may need two doses. The, the ones going to college, who've, it's not clear that they've been vaccinated. Healthcare personnel, where it's not clear they've been vaccinated, and international travelers, because that's where your exposure is the most. Who does not need a vaccine? Uh, if you meet any of the criteria for presumptive immunity. So presumptive immunity is you have written documentation of adequate vaccination. So you have clear evidence you've been vaccinated. You have laboratory confirmation of a past infection. In other words, you have a blood test that shows you have antibodies. Or, like in my case, you were born before 1957, because we all, we all got it. We all know we got it. Uh, and if you have received a measles vaccine in the 60s, you may need to be revaccinated because between 1960 and 1968, uh, there was the use of a, a, an inactivated virus, in other words, a, a killed virus. That did not provide long-term or lifelong immunity. So if you were in that 60 to 1968 window, you should probably be checked. You may need a, 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 another dose. Anyway, that's all you know about measles. That's a lot. Uh, but a lot of people have asked, so I hope that gives you some information that you were interested in. I hope you have a wonderful week, and, and I can't wait to see you next week.